Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 207 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's so nice to have you here on Tuesday, September the 6th. Pretty wild. 2011. Pretty wild. 30 September. What up with that? What up with that, as she says. <laughs> My name's Robbie Ferguson. I'm Hillary Rumble. Nice to have you here. Nice to see you. Thank you. It's good yeah. to be here. Love being here. Where we got at. lots coming up tonight, too, oh, and lots yeah. of fun stuff. Uh, one thing that I've been looking forward to, <laughs> we've been waiting and waiting uh, because it's we were in the middle of doing the video production mm. s- series. Yeah. Uh, we had some server difficulties following a power surge, and so we haven't been able to do all the things that we wanted to do, but one thing that we can do, even with limited mm-hmm. hardware, is stop motion video. Ooh. So I'm very excited to be ah. doing that tonight, so stick around. We're going to learn how to animate Mr. Sulu. All right. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Fun activity for you and the kids. Mm-hmm. Or just you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just you. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> See, I use the kids as a, as a way of as saying, excuse. you know, I'm not, I'm not that big of a geek. Right. It's just it's for the kids. It's <laughs> for the kids. I got these dolls because, you know, the kids love dolls. Mm-hmm. Although they are very cool Star Trek dolls. I mean... <laughs> Action figures. Action figures. It's not adults. Action figures. What was I thinking? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Mm. And also coming up, we got a crazy busy world happening in the land of news. And I'm going to tell you about it right now. Doom is now available in Germany. 17 years late, though. Eating a lot of chocolate cuts, cuts the risk of heart disease and stroke. But there's a catch. Stick around to find out what that is. U.S. scientists are warning NASA that the amount of space junk orbiting the Earth has reached a tipping point. And Linux's kernel.org was hacked, but we know that the Linux kernel itself is indeed safe. And lastly, it may not be up to Vulcan standards, but real-life cloaking technology really works. Well, in the dark. Stick around, because these stories are coming up in less than 30 minutes. Wait a minute. i got to hear what that's all about. Cloaking technology. Cloaking technology. Really all you got to do is just turn off the lights. Hey. We'll have to find out what that's all about. You're just going to have to wait and see. It's got to be legit if you're talking about it. I'm too legit to quit, so yeah. It's got to be. <laughs> Stick around. I love the 80s references. Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. That's how I roll. <laughs> oh, Yeah. We've got uh, a couple of viewer testimonials tonight. We always welcome your viewer testimonials on our website, category5.tv. It's just a way of uh, saying hey to us here at the studio and letting us and, uh, and other viewers know what you think about the show, what you've learned. Um, so we really appreciate every viewer testimonial that comes in. We do. Sure do. So to start this up, I'm going to read you a little something something coming to us from Fatboy106 from Nottingham, England. Hey, Fatboy106. <laughs> I first discovered Category5.tv whilst looking for a tutorial on how to use the OpenShot video editor. Your tutorial helped me, successfully, produce my sister's wedding video, which she was more than pleased with. Wonderful. Yeah. I continue to learn something new every time I visit Category5.tv and now see it as one of the most helpful resources on the web. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. Thank you very much. I would like to thank everyone running Category5.tv and its viewers for providing this valuable source of information. Thanks, Fatboy106, for that nice little post. Yeah, we cheers. loved hearing from you. We also got another one here from Invisible Mutant. Hi, Invincible. Ro- what did I say? Invisible. You're Invincible. You're still thinking about the cloaking I, machine. You're right. I'm stuck on the cloaking because I'm so intrigued. I'm so excited <laughs> to hear about the cloaking machine, too. Oh, my goodness gracious. Invincible <laughs> Mutant. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Hi, Robbie and crew. Hey, this buddy. This is perhaps the second or third testimonial that I've posted here. I just couldn't help myself from not doing this. Robbie and his lovely crew deserve something better from the community. This is the most fantastic tech show channel I have ever watched. Hmm. The incentive to watch this is uncountable. Prizes to be won, good looking and sweet faces. Oh, he must be talking about me. He's talking about this guy right here, I'm telling you. 
<laughs> um, uh, not likely. He goes on to say, lovely voices and interesting content. If I've Cheers, missed man. a live show, I will never miss the recorded one. However, the live shows have more fun, interactivity, and lots of surprises. I am impatient to see how the new broadcast system would perform. What kind of bells and whistles would you, Robbie and crew, add to the impressive machine specs? Mm. Keep it up. The IT world is so much more cheerful with all of you. You have changed the traditional image and dull impression of geeks, including me. Thanks from Invincible. <laughs> Were we just talking about that? Being a being a geek. It's a very cool action figure, Invincible Mutant. Hey. Hey. Thanks for the there viewer testimonial. <laughs> uh, what would I do to improve upon the specs of the cool new server? <laughs> <laughs> that we're putting together. You can find out more about the new broadcast <laughs> system uh, on our website, category5.tv. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's going to do pretty well for us. The one thing that um, that we we unfortunately don't have the budget for right now is uh, the solid-state hard drives after it's all said and done um, because the original server we were going to purchase was a used server for 500 mm -hmm. bucks, so we budgeted 500 and that became unavailable. So in order to go forward we had to purchase OEM parts so and that ended up costing a little bit more so that ate into our hard drive budget so we're going to have to use spinning hard disks the reason i actually want to use solid state isn't so much for the speed anymore uh, because I, I realize that a raid 0 like a 2 drive or 4 drive raid 0 will perform very very well um, but one of the things that i really want to be doing more of in the future is to be able to take category 5 on the road so that means that cool. packing up our gear, going <laughs> to a venue, doing a show uh, live from whatever spot. So That'd be awesome. one of the reasons I want to go with solid state, <laughs> that's non-spinning discs, is so that uh, we don't run the risk of if somebody bumps it or if it, if it yeah. gets nudged a little bit when it's getting moved to and from, uh, there's less chance of actual physical uh, hard drive failure. So, hmm. so that's the one thing I would improve upon, and, I think, and we eventually will, uh, but to start. Uh, I think the specs that we've laid out are going to be fantastic. So, And thanks for the viewer testimonial. If you'd like to submit a viewer testimonial to us, you can do so at category5.tv. Click on Interact, and you'll see viewer testimonials and submit your own. Uh, we would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. cool. Hey, didn't Invincible Mutant send you a groovy, awesome, sweet picture? A groovy, awesome one? I'm Indeed. pretty sure he did. Invincible Mutant uh, has his office set up in such a way that you can watch the show up on the screen up at the top and then have chat room running on the laptop below or whatever else and he says that the other cool thing about uh, having the screen up at the top for for the actual viewing experience is the fact that if there are other people in the room it, it's easier for them to be able to see what's going on in the show they don't need cool. to see the chat room on his laptop oh, or neat. whatever so that's yeah, awesome very cool i'll uh, slip uh, invincible mutant uh, 100 viewer points for that image all right thanks for sending that in We'll take it. Yeah, if you'd like some viewer points, uh, send me a picture of you watching Category 5 TV on your device, uh, whatever your device is, uh, and uh, certainly try to slip yourself into the picture if you possibly can. Uh, I understand if you're, if you're taking the picture yourself, that's a little more difficult, but <laughs> yeah. Perfect. And Thanks, speaking Invincible. of our viewers, are you new this week? Is this the first time you've ever watched Category 5? Are you in the or chat even room? live. Yeah, I got, let I, us know. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you. That would be awesome. So if you're new in the chat room right now, say, hey, guys, I'm new. Yeah, and tell us where you're from. We'd love to give you a shout out. That'd be great. DTapia63 just says, hi, Hillary. Hi. Thanks for saying hi. Thanks for being here. See lots love of having uh, you. Lots of wonderful people joining us in the chat room tonight. Mm-hmm. Yazid, Tordo, Strager, Steve5, Slip3D. And it's really hard to go through all the names because I know There's I'm going to so I'm going to end up leaving someone out, of course. I know. Uh, Annoyance, Blackheim, Cameron. Better say A. Jameson because he gets very very upset <laughs> if I don't. <laughs> He's true blue, <laughs> a true blue fan. And those who are uh, who are checking out the chat room, who are thinking, hey, how come he never mentions me? And your you know your name starts with. One of the, the you know the mid alphabet letters. We usually start from either the Z or A. So That's you know, true. hint hint. So rename. Hey, A. Name. Jameson. It's like okay, <laughs> let's see who's around the mid mark. We've got uh, G G W G, and Jonathan, little M N, hmm. little M N. <laughs> nice to have you here. 
Nobody uh, who's in the chat room who's actually joining us for the first time tonight. I know I've seen lots of people coming and going throughout the week, mm-hmm. just stopping by the chat room just to say, hey, they love the show, uh, and uh, and we appreciate hearing from you as well. Uh, of course, it doesn't always work that uh, that they can join us live Fair based enough. on time zone Fair and things enough. like that. So, And that's why we offer all the different ways to watch. We do. And uh, we've also got, uh, we've got Twitter. You'll see... Uh, there's oh, yeah. My Twitter is at Robbie Ferguson. Hillary's uh, got Twitter as well. I'm on the tweet machine. Hillary Rumble. Fair. Yep, that's me. And, of course, our show <laughs> itself, if you want to follow the show, is at Category 5 TV. Do it. Yeah. Tweet us. Follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on, uh, on uh, Google+. Plus. Oh, it's awesome. cat 5tv slash G+, which technically is my Ooh. own personal account. But it, uh, it, it's all about the show, so you can follow us there. Um, we've got Facebook on our website. If you want to scroll down the page, you'll see us there. We are everywhere, essentially. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, you can run, you can hide, but you can't escape us. We're everywhere. <laughs> Speaking of everywhere, <laughs> we will send a year supply of batteries anywhere Ooh. in the world. And I'm talking, you know, sometimes you get these contests. I know Sulu wants to be in the shot. Get out of here, Sulu. Look at me. I use batteries in the future. <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> okay, so eco-alkalines are eco-friendly batteries. They're alkaline mm-hmm. batteries, as you can tell by the name. It's, it's not just a clever name. They are eco-alkalines. <laughs> and mm-hmm. what's cool is that uh, these batteries, uh, they use recycled material. They Neat. work hard to, to keep these batteries environmentally uh, uh, eco-friendly is really the term. Um, green as far as that goes. Uh, but also, they, they offset their carbon footprint. So what carbon footprint they do have with the manufacturing process is actually offset by the plantation of trees and whatever else oh, is necessary wow. to, to make sure that, that that's offset. So we have a year supply of batteries that we're giving away at the end of the month. And I'd love for you to participate in that contest. Just go mm-hmm. to cat5.tv slash free batteries and uh, you'll be able to become eligible to uh, to win those. It's really, really simple. All you have to do is uh, you can like them on Facebook. You can follow them on Twitter. You can retweet. Cool. the. Uh, there's a particular tweet that we have a link to at this website. And if you retweet it, if you do all three of those things, you have three times the chance to win. And, uh, and if, you, you know, if you're not on Facebook, you can do two things on Twitter. Uh, if you're only on Facebook, you can like them on Facebook. It, there's all these different ways that you can participate in the contest. Uh, but there's no really, you know, there's no having to sign up for anything or anything like that. It's really, really simple uh, easy, to easy. qualify. So make sure, uh, even if you're not on Twitter or Facebook, uh, easiest thing to do would be to sign up for a Twitter account and yeah. uh, follow the show. Get on to cat5.tv slash free batteries for your year supply of free eco alkalines batteries awesome that would be so cool can't beat that everyone needs batteries i I, that's what i say it's true (laughs) you need batteries everyone needs batteries i need batteries he needs batteries yes (laughs) oh my lanta the fun is just beginning i tell you it's just starting i know loads of viewer questions so i'll let you uh, i'll let you take that away all right. Question number one. Coming at us from Gizmo at Work. Hey, Gizmo at Work. Hi, all. Is it possible to monitor how many devices are currently using my Wi-Fi connection? It could be interesting to make sure nobody is using it without me knowing. Thank you, and keep on with the excellent work. And he's yeah. coming from Montreal, so thanks for your email from Montreal. Cool. Yeah, and uh, definitely you can monitor that uh, that Wi-Fi connection. I think that the easiest thing to do, because everybody's using, you're using like a Wi-Fi access point or a Wi-Fi mm-hmm. router. Quite oftentimes, your router will contain some mechanism of being able to monitor who's connected to your Wi-Fi. I think the best thing to do is to actually use your router. It's going to be the most reliable because that's the actual, you know, the access point. Uh, to use the the term, that's where all those connections are being made. So mm-hmm. that device can easily reflect uh, an accurate um, output as to what, uh, h- how many people and who are actually connected to your router. I have a firmware installed on my router called DDWRT. It's DD-WRT. And uh, I'll put links and everything in the show notes for episode number 207 for you. Let me, let me see if I can log into my router for you here. Just so that I can show you how it works on my device. Mm-hmm. He's having some difficulty remembering his passwords. He's got so many things going on. It's hard to keep them all straight. Yes. 
and I, <laughs> sometimes I think my keyboard can't keep up with me. That's likely true. <laughs> I believe it. I've seen you. Oh. I've brought up DDWRT's panel here, and on the panel, I've clicked on status and wireless, and I've pre-clicked those just in case there's anything uh, privately identifying on the, uh, on the router itself. And you'll see if I go down here that there are two devices currently connected to my Wi-Fi. And you can actually click on that device, and it will tell you what it is. So that's made manufactured by Apple. So that's that's going to be uh, that's going to be my iPod. There it is. It's connected mm -hmm. to my Wi-Fi right now, right? So that's how DDWRT presents it. And one of the other cool features of DDWRT that I love wh with regards to wireless, and this is great from a system administrator standpoint, is it's got Wiviz um, or Wiviz or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Wiviz actually pre-configured in the router firmware. And what this does, once it loads up, it's going to actually show you a bit of an overview of your networks and what's flying around your... I think my browser's kind of messed up. There we go. Each one of those little dots is actually uh, a a device or a, a Wi-Fi network nearby me. You can find out information by bringing up the MAC address and find out more about it. There's all different kinds of tools built into DDWRT that are very, very cool. But to answer your questions, your your question, the router is going to have a perfect output of that. Uh, mine, I love DDWRT for that. It allows you to not only see the devices that are connected here, but it also shows you their, their signal quality, the status, and you can copy that MAC address and put it into a filter if you like because DDWRT includes free MAC filtering. So, uh, for example, on my network, if you brought your own laptop, you mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to connect because I, I restrict by MAC filtering specific ah. devices. So mm -hmm. my iPod Touch has a particular MAC filter or a MAC address that is allowed on my network. So. Oh, yeah. Okay, Any other MAC address is not allowed, so that's that's another handy Neat. thing because you're not only just seeing the device, you're seeing the MAC address as well. Hmm. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks for the question. I mm -hmm. hope that uh, I hope that helps. But uh, even if you're not on DDWRT, your firmware might have something within your wireless section. So go go take a look. Log Check into your router. Out. Yeah. Check it out now. Um, side note. Just got a little hello coming to us from a skeptic thinker. First time watching the show live, although watched it before, from India. So Great. thank you. Thanks for watching. Yeah, it's so nice to have you here. Mm -hmm. um, it must be a, a, an odd time in the morning in India, I would think. Probably. Uh, fantastic to yeah. have you staying up for us and, and nice to have you here. And uh, yeah, great. Yeah, from Poon, India. What was Poon. the name again on that? Um, Skepta Thinker. Skepta Thinker. Yes. So nice to have you here. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Thanks for coming. Okay, back to business. Got me a question here from Catherine McCleary. Before, bef sorry, before, I don't normally like to interrupt, but just because there's some chatter in the chat room, sure. people saying, oh, but Mac filtering is, is easy to bypass and things, just to touch on that. Yeah, go for Mac it. Mac filtering oh, yeah. is a nice supplement to WPA2. It's it's a nice way to further enhance your security. It's not a, a on, the only security that you'll use. You'll have WPA2, you'll have your SSID hidden, um, and you'll have MAC mm -hmm. filtering. So with those three things in place, it's quite probable that even if someone was prying, they wouldn't even know that your your network was available. They wouldn't even see your network because you've got all those three things in place and you're able to block them at every level. The SSID being hidden means that they won't be able to see your, your network. The uh, MAC filter uh, being uh, enabled and, and set to specific devices means they won't be able to connect uh, by default, they won't be able to connect in order to enter a password. And then mm -hmm. the WPA2 encryption is going to protect so that if they do get past those original, uh, if they're able to circumvent those, then there's something in place that's fairly strong that's going to uh, protect you even further. So it's about having multiple uh, things in place. I'm not saying just turn on Mac filtering and leave it as is. That would be dangerous for sure. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up in the chat room. Sorry to, yes. no. sorry to step on you there, but that, no, I think that's important. No, thanks for addressing that, for mm -hmm. sure. Definitely good to know. Um, Okay, so our next question, Catherine McClary uh, writes to us saying, Commodore USA.net are manufacturing all-in-one Linux-based computers. Mm. Just add a monitor. 
which mimic the look of the classic uh, Commodore 64 VIC-20 and coming soon Amiga computers. They also will eventually allow one to play classic C64 and Amiga games via emulation with one button access to C64 mode, at least on the C64X. They apparently make use of technology developed for laptops to fit all the guts of a computer into a form factor not much larger than the keyboard itself. These machines seem pricey for what is included hardware-wise. However, as a former owner of several C64s and a C128 and an Amiga 500, I'm still intrigued by the concept. My question is, have any of the Cat5 TV staff or viewers tried the VIC-20 or C64X Linux box all-in-one computers from CommodoreUSA.net? And if so, what'd you think of them? And I'd love for fans of the classic C64 and Amiga games, um, oh, and would fans of these classic games be better served by just running an emulator software on their existing hardware hmm. instead of buying those Linux boxes, which look like right. the old computers they used to love? One of the uh, one of the things that I love about that mock Commodore um, system is that, like the C sixty four, the the keyboards were so much different. The action on those keyboards, <laughs> it's like the old IBM, uh, like the AT uh, keyboards. They just were. There was something about them. The action on them was really really nice. The Commodore sixty four keyboard, if they've been able to successfully. Um, mimic not just the look but also the the responsiveness of that keyboard i think that would be pretty incredible from a nostalgia standpoint i think it looks like an incredible device in that it's it's one awesome case mod if you will but yeah i mean you're looking at a thousand dollars for the base model mm. really when it comes down to it and and fifteen hundred dollars for one that has an i7 in it so the specs can be very good but you're still looking at a, a small form factor system and, uh, you know, I don't know what they're doing to cool it and everything like that. But mm -hmm. I like the C64 edition, the Commodore 64, the, the you know, the traditional, this one here, right? It looks very, very classic Commodore. But I was disappointed to find that their VIC model, they're, they're creating the, uh, the Slim. And it doesn't look at all like, a, you know, it's not a VIC-20 by any stretch. But it's pretty cool that a, an entire computer is fit into that keyboard but it doesn't at all take me back nostalgically like the commodore 64 model mm -hmm. that they're using uh, it's commodore usa.net and you know I, I would think that their target market is not the average end user gamer i think it's going to be more the the nostalgic rich dude <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it's enough. really if you're going to slap $1500 into a computer, you're not going to get one that's just, oh, look at that. That's that's a really cool. Yeah. You might as well pick up at a garage sale for 2 bucks an old Vic 20 and rip out the insides and put an atom board in it and you know, then you'd have something that you can show off to your friends anyways. But if you've got the money, I think they're appealing to a completely different uh different market. I have not tried one to answer the viewer's question there. Mm. Um anyone in the chat room? I don't know how their sales are or, or whether it's uh, whether it's been happening for them. I think it's a neat idea. I think nostalgically it, it would be it would be something that I I would enjoy having on my desk, but I could not see spending that kind of money on Justify it. Justify sure. that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. Well but the specs are pretty good. Yeah. I mean like I say, there's an I seven available for fifteen hundred bucks. <laughs> and it's pretty decent. You know, the specs are all right. But yeah, for what you get, you're paying for the nostalgia through the teeth. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. And to quote Weird Al, as A. Jamison did, you think your Commodore 64 is really neato. What kind of chip you got in there? A Dorito. It's all about the Pentiums. Weird Al <laughs> for the win. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Moving onward and upward. <laughs> Oh, look at this little chestnut of an email I have here. Coming to us from Morton Obadiah David Daniel, located in Waldemore, Lima, Israel. This email hey reads as followed. Hey, Robbie. Talk hey. for a deuce fart a ras pa den forage heaven slen jet tag til dek jar ginin til a yeg ante moitin til kun spore deg dem jet. If you're wondering, it's you not real? in English. Oh, I thought she was playing it backwards. I might have been. <laughs> Freaked you all out, didn't I? Ha! This is actually I better pull this up. a very fine email. And throughout it are words um, that I can identify, such as Facebook, 
Google, okay. YouTube, um, Vimeo. Um, what else? But unfortunately, I feel like my Israeli, I believe that's what this is. I'm not actually sure. Okay. Is, is probably not as good as it used to be. Like, it's probably not one of my, my top languages. So I feel like I might not be able to translate this. Do you know some? No. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> I don't. She pulled my leg. Huh? Okay, let's see if I can this find it. This is actually a great email, and I think it's quite fun. And thank you for sending it. Maybe we can, like, let's see. Um, translate it online for next Okay, week. I've got it here from Morton. Okay. So what I'm going to show you is something really cool. Ooh. I'm going to highlight that entire email. Okay. And I'm going to copy it to my clipboard. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to bring up my internet browser, whatever it may be. I'm going to head on over to Google. The Google machine. The Google machine. Because Google does this very well. Cool. Up the very top, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but they added this translate button way back in the days of Alta Vista. And you'll notice that from is set to detect, so we don't even need to know what the source language is. Hmm. To is set to English. Neat. So, you know, a lot of... A lot of languages can look the same as far as their semantics go, um, especially when you get into um, different um, alphabets. I find it's it's tough to differentiate mm-hmm. because I don't know uh, the alphabets that are not, you know, like an English alphabet. I don't know what the technical yeah. term is, but so then I run into trouble. And there are some interesting characters uh, in this email. So I'm going to paste that in. And you'll notice that instantly, Ooh. Google has detected that this is, a, in fact, Norwegian. Not Israeli, like I thought. And it's translated it to English. That is awesome. Hey, Robbie, thank you for responding so quickly to the last communication I had for you yesterday. Now, notice that the maybe the grammar is not you know, verbatim to what, yeah, you would, yeah. what you would say verbally, but you can get the gist of what the email is asking. Mm-hmm. The reason I want the opportunity to be able to ask you about what I want with a webcam is that I wish that some of my questions would be included in future sending or broadcasts, I would expect, uh, because maybe someone else is wondering the same thing. I want to start new social networks like Facebook, Google+, and others, but the possibi- there, uh, these possibilities that I savor on Facebook and Google+, uh, do I use WordPress as a blog pa- platform uh, to the OXO? I don't know what that is re- referring to. Um, okay, buddy pressure sounds like peer pressure hmm. to have found <laughs> software that creates templates for WordPress, uh, which I've paid for, etc. So it's it, it does a pretty fair job of me understanding, okay, well, he's asking about getting on social platforms and, and using WordPress in particular. Um, it was paid for a template and is curious about, you know, whether they can continue using that to connect to other, other systems, other services. And there are plugins for that in WordPress for sure. Um, moving on in the email, and, and I'd encourage you, no matter what language that you send us an email in, this is, of course, a, a very long email, and that makes it difficult for us to, to answer any one question. But, but you can see how Google Translate has given us an opportunity to be able to follow through with this. And if I scroll down in the email, I'm just going to, and I'm sorry to have to skip over your questions here to some degree, uh, and that's largely because of the size of the email. I'll ask you to scale it back a little bit, but I will review this after the show so that I can uh, give you better attention. Uh, But I feel like as far as on the air goes, it's going to be tough to to get to all of these questions. But So I'll just scroll to the bottom of your email here in which you say, let's see. It says, if I were blessed with a good economy, I would have bought a MacBook, but I have an old Mac laptop, which is completely useless because it has the old Mac OS. Uh, By the way, what solution do you use when you translate from Norwegian to English? Thank you in advance for your help. So I feel like I answered one of your questions there. Check. Right at the bottom. By the way, what what do you (laughs) use to translate? There you have it. Now, if I wanted to, I could then get rid of this text, and I could say, good evening. I'm going to change this. It's automatically detected English. And I'm going to change this to Norwegian. Okay. Thank you for your email. Talk for repost. Didn't e I will reply by email. Yuck, will swear. Because <laughs> it was quite lengthy. 40 days. And I hope that, that you can understand why that is. Sincerely. Robbie. 
So now I've got something that I can send back cool. in a language that is understood by yeah. this particular viewer, and it's fantastic. That's awesome. The usability of that is is wonderful. Um, so give it a try. It's translate.google.com uh, or your region-specific site. For me, it's translate.google.ca. Mm. Little tidbit for you. Cool. Well, yeah. thank you for that. Thanks for the email. question. I again, I'm going to go through that. It's it's quite lengthy. I'll get back to it. And I'll I'll take care of you. I'll I'll see what I can come up with as far as helping you through whatever issues it is that you're experiencing. For sure. All right. Well, it's that time, Robbie. It's that time. Take it away. It's news time. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, a German ban on selling Doom to older teenagers has been lifted after 17 years. The classic video game was put on an index of controlled titles in 1994 as it was deemed likely to harm youth. Like pornography, sales of the old school shoot 'em up games were restricted to adult-only stores. The rules have been relaxed because officials believe that Doom is now only of artistic and scientific interest and will not appeal to youngsters. <laughs> I know this to be true because I bought a first-gen Nintendo and think, thought my kids would love it, and they didn't. No dice. It's just not cool anymore. Old school. Yeah. Not cool? I don't know. Oh, boy. <laughs> In health and wellness news, a review of previous research has found that eating high levels of chocolate could reduce the risk of coronary heart disease and stroke. According to the study published on the BMJ website, data for more than uh, 114,000 patients suggested risk was cut by an astounding one-third. The researchers warned, however, that the same excessive consumption of chocolate will result in other illnesses. <laughs> in- oh, <dear. laughs> There's no winning. Okay. In what is being called a critical situation, scientists in the U.S. have warned NASA that the amount of so-called space junk orbiting Earth is at a tipping point. A report by the National Research Council says the debris could cause fatal leaks in spaceships or destroy valuable satellites. It calls for international regulations to limit the junk and more research into the possible use of launching large magnetic nets or giant umbrellas. The debris includes clouds of minuscule fragments, old boosters, and satellites. Some computer models show the amount of orbital rubbish has reached a tipping point with enough currently in orbit to continually collide and create even more debris, raising the risk of spacecraft failures. The Research Council said this statement on Thursday. A notice appeared on the kernel.org website on Wednesday informing visitors that the servers, uh, the servers that are housing the Linux kernel source code, had been hacked earlier this month. The breach was discovered on Wednesday. The immediate concern in many users' minds was that the Linux kernel itself was hacked. But rest assured, this is not the case. Kernel developer John Corbett um, has an extensive ex- uh, ex- I can't speak <laughs> an extensive explanation of how we know the Linux kernel is safe and sound in which he states kernel.org may seem like the place where kernel development is done but it's not it's really just a distribution point so when we say that we know the kernel source has not been compromised on kernel.org we really know it and tanks could soon get nighttime invis- invisibility thanks to a cloaking device that masks their infrared signature. Developed by BAE Systems, the adaptive technology allows vehicles to mimic the temperature of their surroundings. As you can see in the image here, it also can make a tank look like other objects, such as a cow or a car, when seen through heat-sensitive scopes. A high-tech camouflage uses hexagonal panels or pixels made of a material that can change temperature very quickly. About a thousand pixel panels, each of which is 14 centimeters across, are needed to cover a small tank. The panels are driven by onboard thermal cameras that constantly um, image the ambient temperature of the tank's surroundings. This is projected onto the panels then to make it harder to spot. The cameras also work when the tank is moving. BAE estimates that the technology could be ready to put in production within the next two years. You can get these full stories online at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our fabulous community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. From the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hilary Rumble. That is so cool. Very cool. Very cool. Also now crazy. I get it. Yeah. 
Like, that's wild. That they can manipulate heat, because it makes sense that night vision uses infrared yep. and heat. Mm-hmm. So they can manipulate that heat into making it look like it's a car. That's pretty wild. Just sitting there in the field. Make it look like a cow. <laughs> oh, there's a cow. Just kidding. Which it's I a think tank. Would, that would be more difficult, I would think, because they would have to make it look like it's yeah. moving, moving like a cow. Not that a cow moves like that, but yeah. if, it's, if it's just standing kind of still, they might get suspicious. Still, that's pretty impressive technology. That's stuff yeah. like... I don't know, you would see, like, conceptualized in, like, films from years ago. And now they did it. it's becoming... It was called awesome. Star Trek. Star Trek invented everything. Which, which is pretty awesome, I'd say. <laughs> How and many things can you think of that were invented on Star Trek before, <laughs> before they ever came out? It's like the, that are now a reality. The tablet PC. The, you know, the, the iPad that we're using. The, the mm-hmm. uh, iPod Touch. It's like you see these things wild. on old episodes of Star Trek before that kind of technology was even fathomable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so in honor of our uh, ode to Star Trek, what are we going to do? We're going to animate the whole thing. <laughs> First of all, this episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you in part by Pogoplug at cat5.tv slash Pogoplug. And, of course, Planet Calypso, the free online game, is available for you to download at cat5.tv slash Calypso. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. I'm Hilary Rumble. And tonight, we're going to be looking at something that I've wanted to do for quite some time, (laughs) because I just thought it'd be fun. I mean, we talked about um, some video production features on on Linux Mm -hmm. and using free software to do those video productions. We've looked at OpenShot Video Editor, and and that's a fantastic application, which we're going to get back into. Uh, But then you showed up with these Star Trek figurines. Which you, you didn't ever realize that we'd actually find a use for. I didn't know. I just saw them. Is I was like, we've got to get geek. these. <laughs> He'll like them. <laughs> well, she knows because I, I actually have, like, I, within arm's reach, I'm not, I don't even have to go no, off camera. still here. And I have, like, you know, I can, I can grab communicator pins and <laughs> tricorders and everything else. So it's only fitting to have action <sighs> figures to accompany his it's only grand fitting. collection. Okay. Thanks for that. You're welcome. I'm going to jump into Synaptic Package Manager. This software is available on any Linux computer. Linux is a free operating system. It's an alternative to Mac OS or Windows, and it gives you access to lots and lots of free software. Within Synaptic Package Manager, what I'm going to do is just type in simply, uh, it was called Stop Motion, all one word. Okay. I've already installed it just to save myself some time. Perfect. Okay. What you would do is install that tool. I'm here in uh, Zorin OS, which is an Ubuntu derivative. And you'll see stop motion is there, creating stop motion animations with images grabbed from your whatever. Okay. With that software, here's what's so cool. And I I thought about, okay, well, how are we going to do this? Are we going to use our our best camera and Mm -hmm. and go all out and make a state-of-the-art awesome video? Because we (laughs) could if we had the time. Truth is, I know that most people don't have that kind of gear. Most people don't have the ability to, to probably do this mm-hmm. in, in 1080p. So what we're going to do is we're going to be realistic with this tonight. We're going <laughs> to say, okay, this is what you can do with your kids. This is what you can do just at home if you're, if you're just thinking, hey, this would be a fun project. It yeah. doesn't have to be a Star Trek figurine. I mean, these are great, but uh, <laughs> fully articulating. Uh, people use Lego. They use clay. They use whatever else to, to do these. You can get yeah. your eraser on your desk and make it skip around and do a sure. little dance, whatever you want to do. But to make this realistic for you tonight, what I have, oh, and sorry for that. I've got the, the big screen up there. But uh, what I have, I've got my action figure, which you purchased. Just for two dollars. Two dollars at the dollar store. I should have so been a dollar, but it, it's two dollars. It's not. It's not a. It's not a huge investment. No. Fantastic. Anyone could do it. And I've got a classic Logitech Quick Cam, just a, an old Perfect. USB webcam. All right. For our backdrop, we don't want to have my shoulder in the, oh, the back of the scene, right? The and, I, and I could do this, but what I'm going to do instead? Keep things simple. got the cardboard box from my motherboard. Perfect. Perfect. Now we are producing professional video just like they do in Hollywood. <laughs> oh well, boy. you've got an action figure over there. I've got Sulu. I do. You've got you've got Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. All right. So I've got my quick cam in here. place and I'm going to on the screen while you're working on that, yeah, I'm going and this is the official here. unboxing video of Scotty. 
Scotty. By the way, the official unboxing. First time he's leaving the box. There we go. No longer a collectible. <laughs> Just whatever you do, don't tear it. It, it could double its value. Okay, I'm going to go into sound and video and stop motion. Here we go. Gadwell's crying right now. It's okay, Gadwell. We can okay. just get another one. Another First motion. time in stop motion, I'm going to go settings, configure stop motion, and you'll see that it's detected my quick cam, so that's fine. And so I can apply and hit close. It's going to use that camera. I'm going to click on this little camera icon that's there. It looks like a video camera. When I click on that, it's going to activate my quick cam. Oh, perfect. There we go. So this is actually live. You can see. Whoa. How are you making out there? Oh, a couple there? twist ties, but we're, right. we're getting here. Well, I can get started. Yes. So a couple of quick things. You'll notice here it says mix. So what's going to happen is that my frames are going to get mixed on the screen so that I cannot just see one of the, one of the problems with stop motion is, well, how do I know that it, it's moved just a little bit? Mm -hmm. How do I know that it's in the right position? Yeah. Well, with mix, you're able to actually see that. I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to get my guy. Uh, let's start off screen. There we go. Take one picture by clicking on the camera or hitting your space bar. I'll use the space bar just for kicks. Sure. I'm going to move him in just a little bit. Space. Move him in a little bit more, and you see how it's starting to ghost. Okay. Moving him in. Oh, you're making a lot of noise, noise over there. Sorry, guys. Okay. Moving him in a little bit more. And hit space. And now I'm going to start articulating him so that it looks a little bit more real. So I move them just a little bit. You can see that what is actually happening here is a bit of ghosting. That's the mix that's happening. So I'll hit space. I've got it. Now I move them just a little bit more. Okay. Move his arm just a little bit. And I can actually see both images so that I know that I haven't gone like that because that's just going to look un unnatural. Yeah, yeah. So I can kind of line it up. And even if he falls out of the shot, I can put him back to where I think, you know, okay, well, there's where he was. There's where he should be in the next frame. Hit space to grab the next shot and then keep going. Okay, how are you making out? <laughs> yeah, I'm coming. Okay. I'm coming along. I just, I've moved uh, <laughs> yeah, childproof packaging. Okay, I've moved his arm down a little bit and moved him over. Okay, I'm going to move down his leg. Yes, victory. You're in. Victory! <laughs> Okay, and space. And move them in just a little bit more. And a little bit of more articulation. We're not getting all that fancy with it. You can spend more time, of course. But we're going to make it so that, it, you know, it's he's going to move very unnaturally into the screen. This time I'm going to turn his head just a little wee bit for the next frame. And again. Moved his hands a little bit. Maybe a bit too much, but that's all right. Here we go. Are you going to catch up soon? I'm... Scotty's stuck in the dressing room. He's got to get ready for his on-camera experience. He dropped his gun. Oh, man. Okay. If they could see me now, eh? Take a look at me now. All those kids who used to make fun of me and say, Robbie, <laughs> Robbie plays with dolls. Robbie plays with dolls. Yeah, but I make awesome stop motion video. It's an action figure. Yeah, it's an action figure. Get it right. Okay. See what I'm doing is I'm articulating him just a little bit and then putting him into a position that is just a little bit moved. All right. How's he coming? His he's belt. Oh. Well, if he's if he's not, it doesn't have to be perfect, Hill. Right, I know, fine. I know. I just don't want his pants to fall down, but. Oh, whatever. that's a good idea. All right, he's ready. He's got his Kay. little gun thing. All right, so get him in there. So slowly, he? you want to animate him into the set. And oh, I'm, dear. you know, I can't articulate this guy too much as I'm, because I'm not that good at it. There we go. Okay. Okay. So you're ready to kind of make your way into the set. I'm gonna move just one little degree there. I'm going to turn him just a little bit. And are you stepping in? Okay. Okay, a here she comes. A little bit. Got the gun A little in. bit more. A little bit more. Okay. Well, now okay. I can oh, see it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so stop. I'm going to take a shot. Okay, now we're going to move one. I'm going to turn a little bit. I'm going to turn his head. 
well, maybe moved his arm. So you can see that I can I can realign his arm. See how I messed up his mm -hmm. arm? I can put it there, and I can because I can actually see where his arm was in the previous shot. So have you moved a little bit? A little there? bit. It's kind of blurry. Well, the blur is actually seeing the to show yeah. the two frames, three frames, as a yeah, matter of fact. So he moved a tad now. Okay, a little bit more. Oh, he's a sneaky one. He's moving real slow. Well. Okay, we'll get into the shot. <laughs> okay, in. Yeah. Okay. Notice that I'm not taking the time to do leg actions, and uh, so that's okay. You can spend more time, as I say, with your kids. And okay, you in? Yep. Shot. I'm just hitting the space bar to make this happen. And we're we're about to have a duo, I think. But we're on the same team. Not in this movie. Okay. Are you in? Yep. Here we go. There, now I can see my face. All right, making making your way in. Good. There we go. Okay. Are you in? Yeah. <laughs> my, my belt fell off. That's okay. Drop trow. One frame, he won't have a belt. Okay, get rid of it. See, this is where things can happen like that. You can just put him back where he should be. Okay. Call a continuity director. You in? Yep. yep. There we go. Yeah, this is not a, a directed scene by any means. Come on, Starfleet. Oh, I got your finger in there. Awesome. Oh, dear. I didn't realize that. Oh, dear. Okay. Finger gone? You out? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Next, next frame. This is this is action adventure. This is really like the old uh, track. It's it's slow paced and uh, poor special effects. <laughs> oh yeah, I hope you guys watching this are having as much fun as we are. So we move it just enough. Are. See that blur is is you're seeing all three frames. It's helpful to know. It, it helps you to see where yeah. you need to be. Okay, you in? Let's make them hug. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> then I then I will be in trouble. I, I'm I'm taking you down. Cause Sulu's very angry at Scotty today. And I forget who asked if it was Agamotto or whatever, but this Scotty has all his fingers. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was wondering if he did. I'm gonna punch you. Uh, if I hit you first. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. Okay, so we need to. One of us needs to kind of articulate Let's get down his, a little bit. Oh, here, yeah, get his. Oh no, oh no. Let's. Looks like I'm going down. <laughs> Okay, articulate. The ending of our movie is is trashed. There we Wait, go. Wait, is this the very? Oh, <laughs> there's a hand. Okay, so that leads me to. Oh dear me. Okay, well, what happens if that happens? I can highlight frame number forty three there. See forty three with the uh, hand in the shot, and then over here, I'm gonna go remove that frame. Good. Okay, now that one's gone. So now forty two. It's a little bit of hand in that. I think you're good. That's just a sh shot of the uh, of 43 as it was. So put put your figure up. You're good. There we go. And one more frame. What about like a kick? So he's like victory kick. Oh sure. Kick. Victory kick. Oh, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I messed this up big time. No, that was that was probably me. Okay, that's kind of like a victory is mine kind of thing. Uh, I don't know. I should probably lay my arm down because I'm. There we go. Okay. There we go. A little bit more. There we go. Okay. Good? Yep. Right. And I don't know what now. And I guess that's that's the end of the film. Okay, that's that's it that's for the now, end of the I film. guess. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch out of camera mode. I'm gonna click on that big camera there again. Toggle camera on off. Okay. And now down here. 
you'll see your playback controls. Mm -hmm. Let's check out how we did. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready for this. Well, you know, uh, that's pretty good. For our three-second mini-movie. But here's where it gets exciting. We're going to actually put that on Category5.tv. It's going to be output and rendered Perfect. on the show notes for episode number 207. You're going to download it, and just with your microphone, with whatever device you want to use, record the voiceover, what is actually awesome. happening with that. If you get a couple of voices in there, we might throw you some bonus viewer points. Sweet. Uh, but here's your chance to be in on the Star Trek action. Uh, we're going to give away a whole ton of viewer points, and uh, you know how we work things around here. We usually give stuff away. So, check out the show notes for episode number 207 at Category5.tv once it's up, and uh, you'll be able to participate in that contest. You're going to find more information there. Sweet. Cool. Well, that's that's fun though. I could see that. That is. You cool. know, while we have no purpose or, or <laughs> destination as far as that goes, you can have a lot of fun with that. I, oh, and I say with yeah. the kids, but I could see myself actually doing that with with the kids. No, it'd and, be and neat. It'd be a lot of fun. There's so it's limitless as to what you can do. And you could also, if you wanted to use you know, like stick man drawings and and do yeah. that. Oh yeah. As totally. Well. So in the, the next step, what we want to do is simply make sure that our project is saved. We're going to go file save as. And I'm going to slap it on my desktop as Trek Fight. <laughs> All right. Now we want to render it. And we're going to go File, Export, Video. And now we're going to actually save a video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Trek Fight. And you have to give it an extension. It can be MP4, AVI, okay. whatever you want to do. Uh, so I'm going to go dot .AVI. And what that's going to do is it's going to tell it this is going to be an audio video interleave. There we go. It's been successful. Wow. Okay, so bring up my desktop, and you'll see that I have a new file there called trekfight.avi. It's a video file being played in Totem, and it's good to go. So that oh, is yeah. what you're actually going to be able to download off of our website and add your voice <laughs> to. Okay, We're going to be using free open source software in order to actually add your audio clips uh, to that video. So Neat. make sure you're watching as we receive enough entries for that. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to proceed with that contest as well. So. Cool. Cool. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online, www.category5.tv. Nice to have you here tonight. And uh, I'm your host of the show here, Cat uh, Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Hillary Rumble. I um, show up randomly. Yeah. I almost called myself Category 5 he, TV. Well, he is Category 5. <laughs> really. Let's be honest. There you go. He is. So, okay. Question. Um... When people are downloading this, yeah. what sort of software would they use to do voiceovers? Anything you like. Uh, you can use anything at all. If you need to use a device, you can use like your, your portable phone. I mean, oh, okay, whatever you I need see. To do. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're you're going to have, no matter what your platform is, you're going to have an audio recorder app. So that's fine. Send us a WAV file. Send us a, a MP3, whatever it is. AUG would be, uh, we'll maybe stick you a couple viewer points if it's open source. Whatever you do that's open source, we'll, we'll give you a couple extra viewer points. Perfect. So it'll be a compounding. So let us know, uh, you know, you'll, we'll have the details in the show notes for 207, but uh, you'll let us know how you created the files. Mm -hmm. And we will actually add it to the video for you. So you don't need to compile it or anything like that. Hey, if we have like a bunch, we can have our own little film festival. Sure. We can play them all. Yeah, we could do that, gang. If you have a YouTube account, you could put it up. That if would you want to cool. master it yourself, that's cool too. Yeah. Something to we'll see about. what happens with the viewers. <laughs> it's all up to you now. It's all you. It's all, it's all your creativity. You. Just let the juices flow. The sky's <laughs> the limit here. Yep. Yes, sir. -y. Well, hey, I think we, uh, <laughs> pardon me, we covered quite a bit tonight. Oh, we did. We always, you know, the time always goes by so quick. Yeah, sure does. We've got a, a about, lot. for those of you who are watching in the RSS feeds, or uh, we're, we've got about five minutes, just a little more than five minutes left of the show. So do we have any more uh, viewer questions that we, we can do, actually. Can we do. Take in. Um, I'm just going to pull some up right here. Oh. It's loading. I mm -hmm. know the anticipation's killing me. <laughs> Um, yep, still loading. Now, if you want to send us um, an email and a question, how would you do that, Robbie? You just pop us an email live at category5.tv. Pretty easy stuff. Yeah, that goes straight to Hill. 
and I will read it. Okay, this isn't a question actually, but um, kind of a cool thing from Invincible Mutant. Um, I'm unsure how many of you would be interested in this kind of odd stuff. I like Gmail to be my default mail client. Therefore, I would like it to integrate uh, well with my desktop. Mm. I have the following scripts in my path that I can click um, any mail to link to launch my Gmail in Firefox. But the problem is I don't have a clue on how to make it integrate um, with the send to function in Nautilus. In other words, having a script that attaches files straight from Nautilus to Gmail. Oh, I see. And he sends a link there and some info. Oh, well, I, I could post the uh, the script that he's provided there okay. um, in the show notes for 207. Sure. And query if... Uh, so you want to be able to, like, send to. So you're not sending a... a send to function. Like a Nautilus. file. Ah. Okay. I haven't ever done that. So you're you're looking to send a file attachment, basically. I guess so. I'm going to have to uh, do a little looking up on that. Seems doable. Yeah. On the forum oh yeah, there's lots of stuff. stuff. Like when I do a quick Google search, and if anyone in the chat room has an answer, they can uh, they can certainly put it there for you. Invincible mutant. Um, I don't uh, off the top of my head know how that can be done, but I did a quick search for uh, Nautilus send to mm -hmm. email, and first one that comes up is has got some information about using a command called Nautilus dash send to. I don't know. We'd have to look into it, dude. I haven't done it before, so All right. sorry about that. We'll report back. But yeah, if uh, if people in the chat room have an answer for that, I'd welcome you to, to do that, or I will uh, do a little research and find out for you. Okay, we can do that. Cheers, man. We can do that. No problem. Um, hmm, I'm just thinking... I can pull up another email in yeah. time. Um, this comes to us from Sunil. Question is, I saw your video on OpenShot Video Editor. Great work. I had a Cheers. problem with using Blender, though. I copied all of your steps to unpack the Blender and copy and pasted Blender into the box Blender ex executable. executable. And I get Blender error. Uh, Pop-up box comes up when I try to create an animated title. And he's attached the screenshot, which is very helpful. You can hmm. see that right here. So you've um, gone through the steps, but uh, it's not working? Still some problems. We've got 2.59. So that is uh, current. The the only thing I could suggest is this this executable. So that you've copied and pasted in the executable itself, right? Not just uh, yeah, that looks right. And whatever the the tail end of that is, it's cut off. Just make sure, like browse using Nautilus to this folder, and just right click on that Blender file, um, and and just make absolutely certain that it's indeed marked as executable. So that would be like under preferences. Uh, you'll see that, uh, let's see, under permissions. So you go into preferences and permissions. And then there's one that says allow executing file as program. Just because it didn't sound to me like there were, there were details about the Not actual error message no. or anything like that. If I knew a little bit more about what it is, like what kind of behavior you're getting, I'm I'm expecting that it's just not doing anything, in which case that would be the first thing I would check is making sure that it's executable. Otherwise, it's not going to run, right? Um, but if you have a specific error, uh, let me know. But another thing that you can do is anytime you run a program that you're getting an error and you're not too sure what's going on in Linux, go into Terminal and run that program. So for you, it might be terminal and then type open shot so what happens then is that it loads open shot from terminal but there it is it loads it in the GUI but any errors that happen are going to be output to the screen in this window here so you'll be able to see what the error is that's actually mm -hmm. taking place and that will give you more information unless it's giving you information on the screen uh, but that's another way that you can find out with a Linux application a little bit more about what's taking place in the background so uh, good luck with that. I hope that, that you're able to find it. Um, but post us more details about the problem that you're experiencing, and I'd be happy to, uh, to help you at that point. Wow. Oh. Cool. We're, we're, we're pretty near out of time. That's it. Yeah. Invincible Mutant just saying you can chmod plus x the file. That's the terminal way of doing it, and it accomplishes the same thing. 
uh, as far as how that goes. So yeah, you can do that in terminal as well if you like. But with GUI, it, it accomplishes the same thing to mark it as uh, executable. Hmm. So. But yeah, that's all the time that we have. It's been great having you here. Thanks. Is that I fun? I love being here. I had super, super good, fun good. with this bad boy. <laughs> Continue to get your questions into us live at category5.tv. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, our Twitter ID for the show is down there. And, of course, you can find uh, any one of our hosts uh, that are on Twitter through that, uh, through that account. You'll mm-hmm. see that uh, they are followed there. And, uh, yeah, have a great week. And we'll talk to you next Tuesday night. Looking forward to it. Bye-bye. See ya.